So here we are. I'm going to rustle something up nice tonight. Quite a lot of ingredients here, as you can see. So we've got red potatoes, some baby potatoes, a few onions, a few carrots, kidney beans, chopped tomatoes, salt and pepper, chicken stock, a couple of bay leaves, a few bits of garlic, rosemary, thyme, pepper, barbecue sauce, some plain flour, and here, I'll reveal in a second. So what we have here is some freshly jointed squirrel meat. It's about three squirrels there. It's a lot of meat, but we're feeding quite a few people out of this. So let's get it cracking. Right, so what we're gonna do first is roughly chop one onion. Peel back. What I've got prepared already, I'll show you in a second. Get that skin off. Thin that. So before I chop that onion, I've got myself here, cast iron skillet, and that's got some oil in it. So, what I shall do is I'll get a little, little bit of heat onto that. So we'll get our warming up. Let's get this chopped up. So, all needs to be roughly done. So you see main ingredients. What I'm going to be cooking is Brunswick stew, which is an American traditional dish. Ah, ingredients won't be bang uh, traditional. So let's not say it's authentic. It's a Yorkshire Brunswick stew, so it's my variation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that oil get warmed up. What I'll do, I'll just move that to there. Put squirrel on here. So what I want to do with this now, is just season it. Some white pepper. Now I'm not going to put any salt on because I'm going to add a little bit of bacon to that fat. So now I've seasoned that squirrel with some pepper. Put a bit of bacon in cast iron skillet. can have that piece. So this, what will happen with this bacon is, obviously it's going to add some nice fat and some nice flavour to the squirrel, but also it's going to add that salt. This is why I haven't added salt or seasoned squirrel with salt, because bacon will add a, that salt anyway, I don't want it too salty obviously. That's that. So that leftovers has gone into dog bowl. You can scram on that very soon. So I'll do now. I'll chuck this into a cast iron skillet. You let it start sizzling very soon. Onion's gonna go in as well. And I'll 
I'll show you how that's looking now. As you can see, that's all in there. All anyone needs to do, sweat down slowly. Add bacon to release its flavour and its goodness into the vegetable oil that we've already got in there. There we go. Yeah. Some plain flour. Pour some out in there. We'll put plenty in. Grab my squid out. Move them over a little bit. And we'll do. Start dropping squid in there. Like I said, there's plenty of squid here, but I'm planning on feeding three people. So really, it's a, it's a squiddle each. That bacon and onions smelling delicious. Just wipe that, wash that hand. So what I want to do now, just tie that quickly a little bit. Nothing too elaborate, just stop it from all coming out and then what I'm going to do I'm going to make sure all that squiddle has got a lovely coat in the flour Just like that Under that bag and that squiddle ready to go into skillet. So I'll just give that a quick stir. Then we'll need to sweat it down nicely. All smells good. Let's spin it around so you can see what I'm doing. So let's give that a little stir. Perfect. Nothing sticking. That oil, onions, Bacon is doing well. So what that's going to do, it's going to form a bit of base on bottom. Stop the squill from sticking. What we're going to do, pop these in and just get it browned off really. Too much flour. Once this squill meets brown off, what the idea is then is to pick the meat off the bone and re add back in to other ingredients. What this onion and bacon will do is start foundation for the stew. I've seen this recipe on YouTube, Brunswick stew. It looks amazing actually. I thought why not? It's a traditional squirrel dish, not normally associated with, we call it my country. Making a mess, let's keep it tidy. Wife will kill it. So no, it's not too hot, so just be careful. So 
let's get these brownie. But what I want to do at this point, I want to add some chicken stock. Let's add a bit more white pepper. Obviously we've only seasoned meat, so I want to season all this now. Should be enough, it's lovely. So we've got some time. Just dried thyme, some rosemary, perfect. I'm just going to get a little bit of heat going down again. Mix all that garlic, that pepper in, rosemary, thyme. Give it a good mix round. Get some heat back in that pan. Now what we'll do, have a little tidy round. Right, so what we've got here is a squid on me. Perfect, comes off virtually with fingers. Then we're just a little bit longer probably. What I've got here, I've got my knife, just to make life a bit easier. Obviously all I'm trying to do is avoid bones. I don't want any bones in this. I want you to be able to eat it nice and make it friendly to eat, let's say. And the bones aren't going to go to waste. They will be used for a stock. I'll make my own stock, I'll put it to one side. If I'm getting in there with my fingers. As you can see, I've got quite a bit of this to do. Just get us going through it. That stew's cooking away lovely.
Now you can feel the bones simply with your fingers as you're doing it. Perfect, so I'll get through all these, trim them a little bit better, and I'll come back to you. So after a little bit of prep work, all that squirrel meat's off bone now, nice chunk of meat there. What I've had to do, I've just added another pint of chicken stock to the stew. All them spuds and stuff are softening down now. So let's get this squirrel meat in there, rest the ingredients and let it stew down. So here we go really into the final stages now. This is squirrel meat. No bones in that. Let's get it in there. The Dutch oven is an absolute beauty. But it's a Christmas present I believe. Off the wife. Into there that goes. Let's see. It's a nice ratio of veg, meat. Perfect that. That'll tenderize now, but cook through fully. Come even tender, flake up even more. It should be an absolute delight. It's the taste that's thickening up lovely. That flower's thickening it up. So what we've got here, some kidney beans. I'm gonna pop these in. Now in America, as I say, it's a traditional dish. They don't use kidney beans. They use, uh, it might be lava beans, something like that. What you gotta do with kidney beans, just rinse them off. Second. Just rinse that last bit. What I don't want is all that thick kidney bean juice at the end. And then a tin of chopped tomatoes. Stir. Let's get all that mixed through. It's looking well. Pleased with that. What I will have to do is suck it off this middle ring because there's too much heat on there. Being ideal for getting veg underway and softening it down. But I'm going to move it onto this front ring or back ring, should I say, just there. I'll have it on a low heat simmering for a couple of hours now. And that'll be ready to eat. Now I'm not going to eat it tonight because it's quite late on. So what I'll do, I'll let it cool down. And it'll be good for tomorrow. For tomorrow's dinner. Last ingredient. Barbecue sauce. Sauce and mess up. Right at the end, a load of mess as usual. So we'll pop this in. Get our stir. 
I've got a quick wipe down now as well. Keep uh, keep wipe off wipe off my back. Get that through. That had a lovely barbecue flavour. Oh, I could smell that. I wish we had smell vision You'd absolutely love how this is smelling. What I'll have to do, I'll have to probably add a little bit of water or a little bit more chicken stock. I don't want it to get too thick. But it should help when I put it on reduced heat. So here we are. Looking absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to move that onto the bike ring. Get it on low, low heat. And let it simmer, simmer, simmer. Until what, a couple of hours, then we're good.